Hi everyone and welcome to the sew along video for Danielle's step hem raglan hoodie. So to sew this garment you're going to need an overlocker thread with four threads of colour that match your fabric and you're going to need a plain stitch on a regular sewing machine but just make sure your sewing machine is threaded with a ball needle so we don't create holes in our knit fabric and it's a good idea to lengthen the stitch length from your regular stitch length. Now this is just a suggested construction guide for this garment but of course feel free to sew it however you want. Okay so the garment I'm sewing today I'm going to sew in a stretch lace and a cotton elastane so that's also known as a cotton lycra. Mine isn't very stretchy as this garment doesn't need a huge amount of stretch you can get away with sweat shooting fabric but of course anything stretchier than 25% is fine. The only definite about this pattern is that you do need a knit fabric. Alright so when you're ready uh, let's get started we're going to start on the overlocker which is also known as a serger and um, let's get ready to go. To begin sewing this garment we're going to start with either the back or front piece it doesn't make any difference and what we're going to do is overlock the lower edge. So what I'd like you to do is overlock from the notch halfway up the side seam down around the curve down across the bottom of the garment and back to the same position on the other side. Now remember when you're overlocking your garment it's a good idea to overlock it on the right hand side. So find the small notch and the side seam and begin your overlocking. Now when we overlock this garment we're not going to cut any fabric off, we're simply going to overlock on the edge. Stop there on the curve, pivot and come down. Stop here, pivot, and now we're going to overlock along the bottom. So now repeat what you've done with the other piece. So if you started on the front, now do exactly the same thing to the back. So at the bottom of our garment we have mitres, so let me find it the right way up, okay so this is the bottom hem here. So on each side there's an angle and there's a notch in the middle of that angle. This is where we're going to sew the mitre. So the mitre here is quite chunky, it's three centimetres which is one and three sixteenths of an inch. So that's to create a nice chunky hem. So what we need to do now is sew all four mitres. So let's go to our plain stitch machine and we'll sew those mitres in. So here is the edge that we want to sew the mitre into. Um, what we need to do is fold this right sides together. So here's that edge there, we want to fold this right sides together so that that notch is directly in the centre. And then we want to make sure 
that the hem and that side match up nicely. So this is the shape we want to create, so there's our notch. So turn this around and we're going to sew a one centimetre seam, so one centimetre is three eighths of an inch, well it's near enough to three eighths of an inch. So remember to back tack at the beginning and end and sew that seam. Now when you turn this out, it's probably easy to show you this way, so here's our seam, open that up like that and then turn it through so that the right sides are out. As you can see here, this is going to be a big chunky hemline that we're going to stitch down and that will give us the top stitching detail on our garment. So go ahead and do that again for the other three corners. So that's both of the lower fronts and both of the lower backs. The main thing you've got to remember is make sure that you have right sides together and then that edge there is matched up and that will help your mitre to sit properly once it's opened up. So put that front and back piece away somewhere safe and we're now going to work on the sleeves. So this is our raglan sleeve. Um, you can sew this garment in many, many combinations of fabrics and colours. It's completely up to you. I've decided to do my lace at either side and the plain in the centre strip because I'd be thinking this garment's a nice trans-seasonal layering garment, say if I go out for a walk or something like that. So when you sew the raglan sleeve, what we have is we have a back, we have a centre and we have a front. So how can I tell the difference? The back piece here is marked with two notches and to make it easier to see I've put some pins here. Those two notches will sew to the centre piece and the centre piece here has got two notches here. Then the other side of the centre piece has a single notch here which will sew to the single notch here on the front of the sleeve. Apologies for the noise, my workroom is on the way to an airport and I'm right in the middle of an industrial area so there is going to be a bit of a noise so apologies for that. So when we sew this garment together I always find it's a good idea to lay my sleeves like this and sew them very very um, methodically. So this one to this one to this one, put that aside and then do the same thing for the other side because it's very easy to mix up the pieces. So I've got all of my pieces right side together laid out back centre front. So I'm going to start by taking my front piece and I'm going to take my centre piece place them right sides together, match my single notch down here and overlock that seam. Now with raglans especially you really need to make sure that the beginnings and the ends of your um, seams sew together properly. So start off by just overlocking a little then find your notch, match your notch point and then just stretch out any difference nice and easily so we're going to ease the difference between those two points. Now this is especially important if you're mixing fabric types. You need to make sure that the fabric position is going to sew in the correct place. Okay. 
Once you've reached that knot position, match in the end position. Gently make sure that ease is distributed and continue overlocking all the way to the end. Okay. Now because I'm sewing a lace, what I could do is now edge stitch this to make sure that that seam isn't seen. I'm not too worried about that. I don't think it's going to be seen much in the black anyway, but it is an option. All right, so now let's take a back piece. Making sure it's right sides together, place it onto my piece. So for this one, I've turned it up so the head is here, there are my two notches on my middle piece and my two notch position which I've shown you with pins which I normally wouldn't do but I want you to be able to see it and we're going to overlock those pieces together. Now because I don't like overlocking this way I'm actually going to start from the hem, it's up to you whichever way you want to start overlocking, just make sure those double not notches are going to match. Remember always to take out those pins before you overlock. Right, so that's one of my sleeve pieces done. Go ahead and press that um, and then make sure you sew the other one as well. So here's my first sleeve done. Go ahead and repeat what you've done for the second sleeve and then just reassess the situation. It's a good idea to give these a press and make sure the seams press away from the centre. And then we can move on. So here is that sleeve done. Go ahead and repeat the same process for the other sleeve and then just have a look at them and see whether they need a press. Uh, make sure when you press them that the seams press towards the outside and then we can move on. Right, so now I'm going to start sewing the sleeve into the garment and I want to start by sewing the back sleeve into the back piece. So take your back piece and then take one of your sleeves and find the double notch here. Place your back right side up and then work out with the piece you've got if you put these right sides together which side of the sleeve it's going to match to. So the double notch here with this right side up will sew in like that. So once you've got this in place, go to your overlocker and overlock that seam. Now take your other sleeve and sew that in straight away onto the other side of the garment. So come back to the neckline find the double notch make sure your pieces are right sides together and overlock I 
had a pin fall out but that's definitely the double notch there and I can see it when I open the fabric up. Right, so what remains now is to sew our front piece to the sleeves. So once again, making sure right sides are together, match the sleeve on the front to the sleeve piece. And overlock that together. And then come to the other side of the front, match and overlock the remaining sleeve seam. So now we need to move across to our plain stitch machine before we go any further. So come to your plain sewer and place your front and back together and we're going to work on the side seam area. So what we have on our pattern is a drill hole and I've marked it in chalk here. When we're sewing in the side seam, we need to sew it so that the seam, the step hem will sit nice and open once the garment's being worn. So, come here and place those two curves on top of each other and match that side seam position in. And then come up the side and match that single notch. We're going to sew a line of straight stitches parallel down here towards this drill hole position. What we're going to do is sew the upper area on the overlocker and now the overlocker has a 6mm which is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So we need to graduate this sewing that we're going to do from 6mm, quarter of an inch here, to 1cm which is, which is, which is 3 8 of an inch at this end here. The stop position is 3 8 of an inch or 1 centimetre past that mark position. So that sounds a bit complicated but let's just work this through. Match the notch at the side seam and place that under your machine. What I'm going to do is just starting on the edge of the overlocking I want to sew a nice straight line until at this end it's one centimetre, three eighths of an inch out. So match those side seams. Now this will be tidied up with overlocking in a minute so you don't need to get too concerned about it. I'm going to stitch it here just at the edge of the overlocking and now I'm going to just very slowly move away until I come down. Now I'm going to put a little pin in to show you the position of the drill hole because you can't see it very well. The drill hole is positioned here. We want to sew directly towards the drill hole over the top of it but one centimetre past it. So let me just make sure that's in the correct position there. Oh, you can just see my chalk. So sew down. By this stage, you should be one centimetre away from that seam. And then go one centimetre past that drill hole and back tap and stop. So what does that mean? Well, effectively, our stitching has stopped directly opposite the edge of the curve here where it turns down. Because when this is pressed open, we want it to sit like this. So when you've done that, on this side, turn your garment over and do exactly the same thing on this side. So find that notch and match that notch. Start at the notch 
sew a few stitches just to hold that in place come down and match that curve make sure those raw edges are together sew down and then just gradually ease that out to a one centimetre three-eighths of an inch seam now sew to one centimetre past that drill hole back tack and stop all right so now we're going to move back to our overlocker and finish off the side seam so here is our side seam where we've sewn what I want to do is follow that all the way up to the cuff area match the underarm seam here at the cuff and overlock Make sure at that underarm point these seams are sitting on top of each other. Now all that remains is to join our overlocking up with that plain stitching. So what we're going to do is just overlock down. Then when we get to that notch position just gradually aim the overlocker off so just angle the stitching off the edge of the fabric nice and smoothly so you'll probably end that just over an inch maybe three centimeters past that notch position and go ahead and repeat that for the other side Now let that overlocking blade trim off those previous overlocking threads it will lock them together and it also um, will just tidy them up without any fraying issues now you can trim that overlocking thread right back in and as you can tell it's really tidied up the edge of our garment all right so now let's work on the cuff area so find your pair of cuffs so your mirror pieces what we need to do is take one of them fold them right sides together and overlock this short edge Now this garment has been suggested ribbon cuffs but for this because there's enough stretch in this garment fabric sorry um, I'm going to use self fabric cuffs just stretch just check that your fabric is stretchy enough to get over your hand before you go ahead and commit to making self fabric cuffs All right so repeat for that other piece So that's right sides together so what we're going to do now is turn the cuff back on itself and when you do that make sure you turn it so that that notch there sits on top of each other and that the seam you've just sewn sits on top of each other so just slide your hand inside the tube and turn it back on itself Right, because I have this lovely little cuff attachment which makes life very easy when we're sewing cuffs that's how I'm going to sew my cuff on so come to one of the sleeve cuff areas and we want the cuff to go in like this we want the seam of the cuff to match the seam here at the underarm and you'll notice I said match the notches that notch there on the cuff needs to match this notch in the center bottom of the center sleeve insert now if you haven't put that notch in while you were cutting the fabric out it's not a problem as you can tell it's a really short piece and the notch is directly in the center so take your cuff place it inside the sleeve cuff area so that the garment is sitting right sides together 
match the seam on the cuff to the underarm on the garment and then that notch will match at the other side but what I'm going to do is because it's a little bit hard to stretch it now I'm going to put it on my cuff attachment like this and we'll work it out as we go around so I'm going to start at the underarm because you won't see the seam that way I'm going to start just to one side of that underarm position making sure all three edges are together let's just get rid of that going to overlock right. and I'm just going to stretch this out and making sure it's all nice and firm continue overlocking Right, so here are the notches on my cuff. I want to make sure those notches match that notch in the sleeve insert. And when I have that in the correct position, keep overlocking. Okay, so now go ahead and repeat that for the other cuff. Now the hardest thing you'll find about this is making sure all three edges are lined up. So just go ahead and check your cuff and just do some quality control work and trim any stray threads you might have found. So now we're going to work on the hood and I'm doing the high neck version of this garment. So what I need to do is sew this long seam here. So overlock this long edge making sure the double notches match. Now I've chosen to do this one piece in the main fabric and one in the contrast. So this is the lined hood. Okay, so now take one of the pieces and turn it inside out so that the um, right side is out, sorry. And then when the right side is out, put it inside the other hood piece. and match the seam we've just sewn. So what we want to see is that this garment is right sides together. Now if you need to, place a pin at that position to hold it in place. And then come down and the other position we want to match is at the centre front. So there'll be a notch at the centre front and we want to make sure that that position is in that matched two. So now it's a matter of overlocking these pieces together.
So turn that inside out. So we want wrong sides together. And now you need to decide which is going to be the outside of your hood and which side is going to be the inside of your hood. So the way I want my hood is I want the lace part to be seen while the garment is being worn. So when you've sorted out which side you want to be the outside and the inside, we're going to move across to the plain sewing machine. We're going to sew a line of stitches along the edge just to hold that in the correct position. So because the lace part is the part that's going to be seen, that's the side I want to make sure is up when I'm top stitching. Um, you don't have to do it that way, I just find it a little bit nicer. So push that seam all the way out until it's sitting on the very edge and then run a line of stitches parallel to the edge. Now you can do this at six mil, quarter of an inch, foot width or one centimeter, it's entirely up to you. I think today I'll run it at one centimeter. Might just look a little bit chunkier. And just take your time, but don't stretch this out when you sew it. So to make sure this is nice and even, I'm just sewing the stitch guides, following the stitch guides on my plate. So as I said, it doesn't matter which one you want to follow, it's entirely up to you. And if you wanted to, you could skip this step entirely. Of course, if you wanted to modify this pattern and put a drawstring in, um, this is a great way of creating the channel for your drawstring. Now because I'm already at my plain sewer, I'm going to jump ahead and do the hem before attaching the hood to my garment. So I'm going to sew this from the wrong side but you can sew it from the right side if you prefer. So come to one of the side seams and open it up like this. The main thing to do here is make sure your work is all sitting nice and flat. So to create the stepped hem effect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, sew across and then down through the overlocking. If you don't want to sew through the overlocking, you can sew this at whatever width you want. The key to this is make sure you're at least a foot width, which is quarter of an inch or six mil, above the join here. It'll just create it, make it look a bit tidier. If you want to, you can start and finish from the middle here but I'm going to come across here and start and finish on the um, overlocking line in the other side. So when you first start out, make sure it's like this so it'll sit properly. Sew a couple of um, holding stitches, back tack, right, and sew across to the other side. Stop with the needle down in your work, turn and pivot and rearrange that so it's sitting nice and parallel so the same amount of distance away from this fold. And then we're going to overlock, uh, sew through the overlocking all the way down towards the mitre. making sure this bottom edge is sitting nice and straight. So into the middle of the mitre seam, stop with your needle down, lift, turn and pivot. And then put that presser foot down and rearrange your work. Now some of you might find this easier to press this into place before you start sewing. Thank you. 
Now make sure that these mitres are pressed open, which means the seam is um, less thick to have to sew through. Okay, so now we're back to the equivalent place we started from. And you just need to now repeat what you did earlier. This, because I started on the back, um, now we're going to go across to the front. Now this garment might look slightly wavy now, don't worry about it, once it's pressed you'll push all that into place and as long as you're not stretching this as you're sewing it, the seams, the uh, hem should all sit nice and flat. Okay, so now we're meeting up with the beginning stitching. I'm just going to back tack and I'm going to go and give my garment a good press now before I move on to the hood. So the last piece we're going to sew on is our hood. So here is my garment, this is my front, it's right side out, and this is my back. It's a good idea to start like this and just decide which is the side you want the outside of the hood to be and the inside of the hood to be because it can be a bit, get a bit confusing if you try and pin it from uh, when it's inside out which is the way we need to sew it. So go ahead and just match the single notch which shows us the front to the single notch on the hood making sure right sides are together and then do the same thing at the back and just double check the hood is going to sew in the correct way. Right. If you're happy that the so hood's going to sew in the correct way, turn your garment inside out. It's much easier to sew this hood from um, inside out. So there's the single notch which shows me the front of the garment and the front of the hood. And then I'm going to match the seam at the back of the hood to the double notch on the garment. So the double nut notch shows us the back neck. Once I've secured that in place, I'm now going to come around to the notch at the center of my insert and you'll find on the hood there's a notch that matches to it. So pin that in the correct position. Remember when you pin, you want to pin within the seam allowance just in case you cause any holes in your fabric. Right, so come around to the other side. There's the center of the sleeve notch in the insert. And find the other notches on the hood and make sure that's in the correct position. Now I strongly suggest that you turn this right side out now, just double check everything is the way you want, you're better off spending time now than trying to unpick overlocking. When you're happy, we're going to overlock this seam into position. Now when I overlock this, I don't like to start overlocking from the centre front or the centre back because it leaves an ugly beginning and end point. I start somewhere around the sleeve area, but it's entirely up to you. The main thing we have to make sure of when we're overlocking this is number one, don't overlock over the pins, you'll smash your needles, and that any ease, any stretch, is evenly spread between those pin positions. So start off by just overlocking, just to hold it in place.
So just double check your garment for quality control, any stray threads and things like that. And uh, remember to sew your label into it, into the centre back if you have one. So thanks for joining me for this sew along video. Um, I hope you join me for my next sew along video soon.